During the court vacation, one of the things that happened was that Lagos State got a new chief judge, Justice Olufumlaya Atilade, was sworn in. And one of the things she said in her acceptance speech was that she was going to ensure that there was an elaborate use of alternative dispute resolution to decongest the court docket so that we can have cases speedily dispensed of, you know, because we always say that justice delayed is justice denied. So apart from more use of ADR, what solutions will you suggest for tackling this delayed justice in our court system? Well, um, I think it's fantastic that the CJ, and that, I have to say, is something Lagos has led. The uh, fact that they recognize that the alternative dispute resolution mechanisms and have, have to be part of dispute resolution generally. You can't just rely on litigation alone, and that really should be a last resort. Um, the fact that the multi-door courthouse is it's described as it is, means that we've got to be, in my view, um, quite imaginative, creative, yes. in the way we find solutions to ensure that our citizens who come to the multi-door courthouse and the courts for justice get it quickly, because justice delayed is justice denied. With uh, alternative dispute resolution, there are multiple ways you go through the process. So it could be a hybrid door, it could be a, a via mediation, you could come in for an early mutual assessment, it could be arbitration. Only one of those ends up in, if it gets to the end of the process, in an enforceable uh, outcome. outcome. The others. the others, they can go through the process and then decide to walk away. And that's where the new Chief Justice, I'm sure, will be focusing on to ensure that, one, do not um, interfere with the freedom and independence of the parties to make their decisions up to the point where they reach agreement. But once they've reached an agreement, then interface to make it enforceable. So a lot of times... have the same situation where time is wasted precisely, and things break down. Precisely. A lot of times they may not get to that point. But once they do, instead of throwing them back into the litigation process, because that is the only way you can make it an enforceable judgment, I'm sure there must be a way, if sufficient thought is applied to it, in view of the fact that the LMDC is part of the court system, yeah, court precisely, yeah. where, of making it enforceable without going through the you know, litigation process. Now let's talk about the issue of the NBA, the Nigerian Bar Association. Perhaps we should start with an assessment of the Okewali administration. I want you to assess that administration and how well that he has done in the areas of being bold, being fearless, being vibrant and speaking out against corruption, injustice, insecurity, and all the ills that plague us as a nation. I have to congratulate Okewali for SCN, uh, immediate past president, for the two years that he dedicated to the service of the profession. It's not an easy task. It takes you away from your practice. You find you have to devote a lot of time to it, but you signed up to it, so you have to do it to the best of your ability. Um, yes. It has been said that he could have spoken out more. And you don't agree? I know from what he has said on record that his style was more conciliatory than confrontational. Was that good or bad though? That's a personal style. Mm -hmm. What I think is important, because I think the institution is bigger than any individual, and I think it should not, what we do as an institution and how we're portrayed or seen by the Nigerian public should not change from one individual to the next. There should be continuity, there should, and that, you can only ensure that with procedures that are in place to ensure that we are able to quickly respond to pressing national issues speaking for the bar. There's an arbitrariness in the way it's dealt with at the moment that you know, will not change without policies in place. And I'll give you an example with the Commonwealth Lawyers Association, which I led for two years. This is uh, similar to the Nigerian Bar Association, 
we have a council and it's made up of council members from across the 54 countries. We then have an executive committee, which is the equivalent of your national officers. So where there's a burning issue, because the council only meets at intervals, as does the MBA's national executive committee. You know. So where there's a burning... Precisely. Where there's a burning issue of importance to any of our jurisdictions, from Maldives to Sri Lanka to uh, Papua New Guinea to Nigeria to Kenya to wherever, it's flagged up because there's a secretary general who runs the institution and the exco via email. So regardless of where we are, okay, quick research, due diligence, is this actually contact the bar in that jurisdiction? What's going on? What's your view on this? With that information, being equipped with full information on the process as much as possible on what's going on, we then reach a position by majority voting. So it's not I as an individual. When I speak, I speak for the CLA because that executive committee has by majority vote agreed a position. And we then, as the face or the ambassador of the association, I then speak. I would commend that to the Nigerian Bar Association. That will stop the arbitrariness and the you know, what's this person's style like or that person's style not like, and also ensure that we respond quickly, quickly and we are right. truly re reflecting the 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 precisely as opposed to the one individual. We go, I was at the delegate selection, we elected officers to serve us. We didn't elect one individual, and they ought to work together as a team, collaboratively, so you think to speak should, for the bar. More often and then the. As issues break, Absolutely. The Use the email. I mean, the internet has been with us for you know, over half a century now, so it's not a new tool. So we ought to employ it a bit more and that ensure be, that... That should yes, bring back the vibrancy of me. I should think so. Now, you attended the annual general conference of the association, which just ended in Oweri, Imo State. I read somewhere that you said that you were even glad you attended because of some of the issues that were discussed. But you listened to the president's inaugural address. What are the key things that stand out for you in that address? Or if you were to make suggestions for the association being vibrant, what are the things that you would recommend to him? Well, firstly, again, I congratulate him on his inauguration and wish him a successful tenure uh, in the service of the bar. Um, the items that were set out in the speech were from the manifesto. So this is the basis on which we elected you to serve us as our president from 2013 to 2016, 2014, 2014 to 2016. And so no doubt a lot of thought must have gone into how am I going to implement this? Because I'm not making empty promises to the bar, I hope. And therefore, I would expect that um, Depending, because at the end of the day, the uh, National Executive Committee is the supreme decision maker of the NBA. So you can take it forward, but NEC can shoot it down. So if you're able to get NEC to buy in, you can perhaps move forward with some of these things. If you're not, we would have seen that you have tried. For instance, at the last uh, NEC meeting, there had been various constitutional amendments proposed, the majority of which were uh, turned down. And members said, no thanks, we don't want them. And therefore, they couldn't move forward with those. Having put that in that context, I would very much like to see the e-voting happen. I do I agree. I agree now. with the fact that this whole delegates thing has, it's far too expensive. I was a delegate. I know how much I spent to attend to exercise my uh, franchise. franchise. And um, I'm sure it was the same for a lot of uh, lawyers who attended. And you can apply that to other things, put it into our uh, service, for example, and put it to good use. 
Now, one of the things in that inaugural speech was also the nullification of the leadership of the section on legal practice. You are or were a council member. I don't know what the status is now with the nullification, but what did you think of that move by the president when he nullified the current leadership and appointed an interim chairman to run the section for the next six months, pending when elections will be conducted? That's an interesting conundrum, man. You know why that is? <laughs> because, yes, the president made the announcement. Yes. But I have checked the constitution of the Nigerian Bar Association. And I don't see where he has the powers <laughs> to do this. I really haven't. It's only my colleague's opinion. He doesn't have the power. I may be wrong, because there may be something I have missed. But I, you know, I have done my homework, and I'm thinking, no, this is not the right process. So what's the, right the process, process, in my view, should have been, this was your inaugural address. You haven't had a meeting with your ESCO. You've just come in. Um, you, the proper process would have been, in my view, to take when the neck is constituted, you take it forward for neck to consider, and if they then feel that yes, the complaints or that there were breaches that require the action that the president uh, announced, then neck would vote on it and and come out with. Their, their position. And this is where we end today's episode of the program. These and past episodes are on our YouTube page, and you can interact with me via Facebook, email, or Twitter. I'm Shara Shirelli. Thank you for watching.